Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to use the normal distribution to approximate binomial distribution problems. So basically, what we're saying is we have a binomial distribution real life context and we want to use the way that we solve a normal distribution problem on this binomial distribution problem and you're probably wondering why would we want to do that so let's take a look at this binomial distribution problem and see how we would do it normally using the binomial distribution formula so in this situation eddie takes 500 shots in basketball so that's saying that we're going to have 500 trials what is the probability that he will get more than 200 shots in so x is equal to 200 um actually let me just rewrite that x is bigger than 200 because x is the number of shots in and we want to have x is bigger than 200 and the probability of success is 0 0.7 so that means the probability of failure is 0 0.3 so if we were to do this, if we were to find the probability of x being bigger than 200, we would need to find the probability of x being 201 plus the probability of x being 202 plus probability of x being 203 all the way up to the probability of x being 500 so we will basically have to repeat this same thing uh, 300 times or something similar now every time we want to find a probability so every one of these probabilities we would need to type in the formula in cr p to the power of r q to the power of n minus r into the calculator where n is 500 r is you know 202 p is 0.7 and so on we need to repeat all of this 300 times or 299 times or something like that it's just a lot of hard work so in order for us to simplify this process what we do is we use the normal distribution method so if you guys remember with the normal distribution we have a bell shaped curve that's a very badly drawn curve but it will be something like that where the highest point is in the middle and it just goes down exponentially um, and you can imagine that if we were taking 500 shots the probability of you getting 500 shots in is very small the probability of you getting you know two shots in or one shot in is very small and it's very likely that you're going to get a, some sort of mean amount in the middle so the area under the curve is the probability so whatever the mean is the chance of you getting somewhere around the mean so this area is a lot bigger than the chance of you getting um, somewhere around there so the area under the curve is the probability so in order to approximate this what you would do is you would find the mean using this formula so this formula is only um, can only be used when you're using normal distribution to approximate binomial distribution now in order for us to be able to do this the first thing you want to do is you need to check that n times p is bigger than or equal to 5 and n times q is bigger than or equal to 5 so that is the prerequisite prerequisite 
Okay, so if this is not satisfied, then you can't use normal distribution to approximate binomial distribution. So let's do our little check. So we have n in this case is 500. So n is 500 and p is 0.7. So n times p is 500 times 0 0.7, which is 350 and n times q is 500 times 0 0.3 which is 150 so both of these numbers are bigger than or equal to 5 which means you are allowed to use the normal distribution to approximate binomial distribution so once we know that we're allowed, then we can simply find the mean using this formula, which is n times p. So it's simply 350 as we have calculated earlier. And then we want to use the standard deviation formula, which is n times p times q under a square root. Now, the method used to derive this formula, hopefully you will not be tested on. If you are, then you are probably a mathematician doing some sort of statistics course at uni, so uh, you wouldn't be watching this video anyway. So, um, you're going to go 500 times 0 0.7 times q which is 0 0.3 and square root it okay so put all that into your calculator and you're going to get 10.24 so if i redraw my normal distribution curve you can basically draw it so that the highest point in the middle is 350 all right 350 shots in in the standard deviation is 10.24 so that means that approximately 34 percent higher than the mean let's say it's about here it's 360.24 and then over here it's approximately whatever 350 minus 10.24 is so 339.76 or something like that so yeah that's pretty much the normal distribution curve so now we can use this to find out this question what is the probability that Eddie gets more than 200 shots in? So 200 would be somewhere far to the left, really far to the left. So let's just say 200 is over here. Let's just say over here is 200. And we want to know um, let me just zoom in on that. We want to know the probability of getting more than 200. So we're basically going to highlight all of this area. Now, there is one thing that I need to talk about right now, and that is called continuity correction. Now, why do we need to apply this continuity correction? And the reason is because binomial distribution was originally a discrete probability distribution. So what that means is that we wouldn't have anything in between whole numbers. We wouldn't have between 200 and 201. We wouldn't have 200.5, for example. So you have to imagine at each of these vertical lines, uh, 200, there used to be a column graph. Okay, it used to be 200 
201, 202, and so on, it used to be just columns all the way through. Before we put the normal distribution curve across the middle of the top of each column, before we apply the normal distribution curve, um, the binomial distribution was just a series of bars. So the width of each bar is basically going to be between um, 100, so for x is 200, the width of the bar is basically going to be from 195, uh, sorry, 199.5 to 200.5. Okay, this would be the width of the bar. So when we want to find the probability of x being more than 200 shots, we actually need to find the area of the curve from when x is 205. So we're basically looking for the pink area because we're not including when x is equal to 200, we're not including that, so we're not, so let me use a different color, we are not including, we're not including this bar, we're not including this bar in our calculation. So we're just finding the pink area, and so what we need to do is we need to find the z-score. So the z-score is the um, x value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, which is the x value is 200.5 minus the mean, which is 350 divided by the standard deviation, which is 10.24. So if you put that into your calculator, then the answer is negative 14.59. So that is a very, very negative z-score. So the chance of you getting that is going to be almost equal to zero. So now let's just use the graphics calculator and I'm assuming you guys have learned about the um, normal distribution function on the calculator. So we want to find the chance of getting the z-score between 0 and 14. 0.59 with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1 because it's the standard normal distribution. So the chance is 0 0.499999. So that means that the curve. So from z-score of 0 to negative 14.59, this probability over here is 0 0.499. So plus the 0 0.5 on the other side, the probability of z being bigger than negative 14.59 is going to be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.499, which is 0 0.999. That is the probability of you getting more than 200 shots in. And if you think about it, it sort of makes sense because your probability of success is 0 0.7. So 200 shots is out of 500, that is only about 0 0.4, which is very unlikely considering that your probability of success is 
0.7, so it's very unlikely that you're going to get less than 200 shots in. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.